The Proverbs says in Proverbs 14, 17, a quick-tempered man acts foolishly. In verse 29 of chapter 14, he says, he who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. One of the best ways to build strength of character and cultivate love is by learning to control your temper. Solomon wrote Proverbs 16, 32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules a spirit than he who takes a city. Number seven, love thinks no evil. That Greek expression, expression for the word think is an accounting term, reckon. It's a word that speaks of record keeping and the tabulation of accounts. The Bible says love does not have a record keeping tabulation of the counts of people that have done you wrong. So the idea here is very specific. This has little to do with thinking about evil things in general. It's about imputing, putting on somebody's account evil motives to others and keeping a tallies of wrong suffering. A marriage would never make it if you keep an account of wrongdoings. I got a letter one time, a friend and I fell out. You know the sad commentary is? Years passed and we would communicate it next time. Neither one of us could remember why we fell out. And I thank God he had not and I tried not to keep a record of wrong. To borrow the language of another translator, love does not take into account a wrong suffered. In other words, love has a short memory when it comes to offenses and a positive outlook in the assumptions that it makes. Love is always eager to believe the best and this sort of optimism is a fine character quality. Someone may say you're gullible. I'd rather be gullible than hard-hearted. You ever stopped at a rest stop and there'd be somebody there and a man say, my wife and children are over in the car and my car broke down, can you help me? Well, they don't get that man any money. He's just out here ripping people off. Maybe not. Oh, you're gullible. I'm also generous. <laughs> and I'm going to give him a gift. We say, what, what if he ripped you off? Between him and God, I did what I thought I ought to do. Amen. Holly loves to do it. When she's in the car with me, we're riding downtown. There's a man standing out there, and it says, we'll work for food. She says, Daddy, I feel led for you to give him some money. <laughs> Hand it to me. I'll, I'll give it to him. She's so generous. It's reflecting a spirit of eager forgiveness and trust. Number eight, love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love finds no satisfaction in sin, whether our own sin or the sins of others. I want you to hear this. This is the love of God. I've got something to say to everyone here today, especially those of you that are single, that aren't keeping yourself pure. I'm amazed at the people that seem to be under the umbrella of the church that are so sexually active that are not married. The Bible says love does not rejoice in iniquity. You say, now how in the world are you going to bring that together? Stay with me. It finds no satisfaction in sin, whether our own sin or the sin of others. We live in a culture that glorifies sin. 